Okay, guys, uh, Timmy coming at you again, and uh, today we're going to talk about um, the hemodynamics of blood flow. Uh, that, again, that's kind of a fancy way of saying uh, how does the left ventricle know to generate more pressure, or how does arterial blood know where it's supposed to go? So uh, let me get to cracking and uh, see if we can figure this out, all right? So uh, here we go. All right, guys, watch. First of all, the left ventricle right here is your primary pump. And because it's made of muscle, it can contract and relax. And when the left ventricle contracts, it will push that arterial blood through the arteries of the body down to the cells of the body and ultimately to the capillaries where nutrients and gases are exchanged. Here's the important thing. The goal of the cardiovascular system is to maintain blood flow. That means whatever the cardiovascular system is demanding in terms of oxygenated blood to the tissues, the cardiovascular system has to produce it. So in clinical, you probably have seen the term Q, right? Q means flow. In this case, because we're talking about the heart, Q is blood flow. And at rest, the normal adult pumps about five liters of blood each minute. And Q can be defined by, I hate to do this to you, but like a little equation called Ohm's flow law. And because it's a law, it's got to be followed. So Q, in this case, is determined how much blood is being pumped by the cardiovascular system each minute is determined by your systolic blood pressure and that's really how hard the left ventricle is contracting divided by the resistance to arterial blood flow because again the left ventricles pump an oxygenated blood through the systemic arteries. And this is absolutely critical. So <clears throat> what ultimately determines resistance to arterial blood flow is the diameter of the arteries of the body. And again, what? <clears throat> what are arteries made out of? Arteries are made of muscle. And what are the two things that muscle can do? Boring life, kind of like mine. It can contract and relax. So from your anatomy class, you learned that this arterial blood is flowing through the little hole, the little lumen in the artery. So this is the artery. That's the thick muscular wall. So if you have the artery like this, and it has a diameter like this, and then something, who cares what it is right now, causes all of the arteries throughout your body to constrict. The muscular wall of the artery contracts. The lumen of the artery gets smaller. So if the lumen of the artery gets smaller, if the artery vasoconstricts, that means that it's going to be harder for that oxygenated blood to flow through that artery. So when the arteries vasoconstrict, that increases the resistance to blood flow. So... What's the goal of the cardiovascular system? The goal of the cardiovascular system is to maintain Q. So watch. If you still got to pump five liters of blood per minute, and what's it determined by? Five liters is determined by... 
your systolic blood pressure divided by the resistance. So if the arteries, the diameter of the artery was this big, and then something made all of the arteries get smaller throughout your body, the resistance to blood flow went up, meaning it's harder for that blood to flow through these arteries because it's smaller. Think about you put your finger over a hose. The same amount of water is coming out of the hose. But if you put your thumb over the end of it, you've made the hole smaller. So what happens to the pressure of the water that's coming out of the hose? It has to go up because the same amount of water is coming out of that hose. So in this case, if the arteries throughout your body get smaller, the resistance to blood flow goes up, and you, the left ventricle now has to increase the pressure in order to maintain blood flow. So what happens if your arteries constrict? It's going to make it more difficult for that arterial blood to flow. So your little left ventricle right here has got to contract harder to try to get that same amount of blood through smaller arteries. Now you got high blood pressure. So the doctor says, you got high blood pressure. And you look at the doctor and you say, hmm, that's bad for me. I don't want it. Then the doctor says, yeah, I don't want you to have it. So now you're in agreement. So watch. Here we go. And in our last video, I explained it to you. What's the most important element in muscular contraction? Well, I'm going to tell you because I like you guys, as far as you know. It's calcium. And the heart and blood vessels, arteries, rely on calcium from the blood to contract. Can calcium from the blood just go into the muscle cells of that artery and cause that artery to contract? The answer is no. It has to go through. This is killing me. A specific calcium ion channel. And when calcium goes from the blood into that, through that calcium ion channel, the muscular wall of the artery will contract and the diameter of that artery will get smaller. It will vasoconstrict. Let's go back to our buddy, our pal, our own flow law here. What happens if the artery gets smaller? The resistance to blood flow goes up. And because you got to maintain that five liters of blood per minute, your systolic blood pressure has to go up to maintain that blood flow. Now you got high blood pressure. So the doctor said, Timmy, you got high blood pressure. <coughs> I was going to cry, but I just coughed instead. <laughs> Anyways, so the doctor gives you a drug, and that drug blocks calcium channels in the muscle cells that make up the artery. If calcium from the blood can't get into that muscular wall of the artery, that artery can't contract. So what's it going to do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to dilate. And when it dilates, the artery gets bigger. And now the resistance to arterial blood flow goes down. Because it goes down, the artery in this case, watch, the artery didn't constrict, got bigger. Hang on. Oh, no. The artery got bigger. So it was like this. Then you gave him a calcium channel blocker, and it went like this. So what's going to happen to the resistance to blood flow? The resistance to blood flow is going to drop. It's going to be easier. So that means that little left ventricle doesn't have to generate as much pressure. So your blood pressure drops. So again, 
Physicians control blood pressure. One of the ways, and one of the big ways, is by controlling the diameter of arteries. And one of the ways to make arterial diameter bigger is by blocking calcium. So that's how calcium channel blockers work in controlling blood pressure. All right, hope you learned something. When we talk about shock, this Ohm's flow law will come into play. So we can never forget that. I hope you learned something and uh, good luck.